This is the first lecture for Chapter 16 on aqueous ionic equilibria, and in this video we'll be focusing on buffers and buffer systems. The first buffer system that we want to look at is the, the buffering nature in the blood due to the bicarbonate. So each year thousands of pets and wildlife die from consuming antifreeze, and most brands of antifreeze contain ethylene glycol, which has a sweet taste, and this is why most animals drink it because it tastes sweet. And when the animals consume this, they're, one of the first things that you notice about the animals is that they actually appear to be drunk. What happens is the ethylene glycol gets metabolized in the liver to glycolic acid. And if it's present in high enough concentration in the bloodstream, it's going to overwhelm the buffering ability of the bicarbonate ion. And this causes the pH of the blood to drop. And when the blood pH is too low, its ability to carry oxygen is compromised, and this is what we call acidosis. The treatment to, to this acidosis is to give the patient ethyl alcohol, which has a higher affinity for the enzyme that catalyzes the metabolism of ethylene glycol. So when we say that the ethyl alcohol has a higher affinity for the enzyme, we mean that it has a higher K or a higher equilibrium constant than does the ethylene glycol. So we said that the bicarbonate helps to buffer the blood. But what are buffers? Buffers are solutions that resist changes in pH when an acid or a base is added. And they do this by neutralizing either the added acid or the added base. But just like everything else, there's a limit to what they can do. So eventually the pH is going to change. Many buffers are made by mixing a solution of a weak acid and a solution of salt that contains the conjugate base. In this example here where we're looking at the formation of a buffer, we're combining a weak acid, acetic acid, along with its conjugate base, the acetate ion. So we're supplying the acetate ion in the form of sodium acetate. So remember the sodium part, the sodium plus, is a neutral cation, and the acetate is the deprotonated form of the acetic acid. So let's talk about how acid buffers work. The reason why these buffers work is because they apply Le Chatelier's principle to a weak acid equilibrium. Buffer solutions contain significant amount of weak acid molecules, and we're just representing the weak acid molecules as HA. Now these molecules react with added base to neutralize it. So if you're adding a base, the HA will consume it. You can also think of the hydronium ions combining with OH to make water. You can also think of the hydronium ions combining with the OH to make water. The hydronium is then replaced by the shifting equilibrium. The buffer solutions also contain significant amounts of the conjugate base anion, and that's the A-. These ions combine with added acid to make more HA, so the protonated acid, to keep the hydronium ion constant. So let's think about this system. Let's say we've added a base. So I'm just going to use B to represent my base with a lone pair. That base will then react with my proton. So the proton will protonate my base. This will cause the concentration of the hydronium ion to go down. So if my hydronium ion concentration goes down, my pH goes up. But to compensate for this, the equilibrium will shift to the right, which will increase the concentration of the H plus to counterbalance that decrease of the H plus due to the added base. So notice how adding the base didn't change the hydronium concentration that much because the equilibrium shifted to replace the lost hydronium ions when they combined with the base. Another way to think about the same problem is, let's say we added the base, and the base reacts with the H+, and it deprotonates the A-. So deprotonating the acid makes A-, and it has to shift to the left to make more of the A-. Now let's look to see what happens when we add an acid. So if we add an acid to our system, the H+, this acid will protonate our A minus. So the added protons from the acid increases the hydronium ion concentration. This causes a shift to the left. The only way it can shift to the left is if it consumes some of the hydronium ions to make HA. 
and this lowers the H plus concentration, which keeps the hydronium ion concentration consistent, so it resists the change. Let's look at this pictorially on the next slide to see what we're talking about. So in this example, we're looking at the weak acid system again that has HA and the conjugate base A minus. And we're going to add some protons to it by adding an acid. Well, the acid will react with our base. And when it reacts with the base, it makes new protonated acid. And so it's going to shift to the left to compensate for this to keep, so rather than the added acid increasing the hydronium concentration, the added acid reacts with the conjugate base to make more of the, the weak acid. So let's try this again, but this time we're going to add hydroxide ions. So we're going to add a base. We can think of the base as reacting with the weak acid. And when the base reacts with the weak acid, it deprotonates it and makes more A minus. So the reaction shifts to the right as it makes more A minus, and it keeps the hydronium ion concentration. So the base reacts with the weak acid to make the new conjugate base. So what's going on when we're using a buffer, we have the common ion effect. And there's a video on Blackboard that illustrates the common effect principle. So you please watch that outside of this video. Now adding a salt that contains the conjugate base. So if in the, our example we're adding sodium A, so the anion form of our conjugate acid. That, so this contains the anion, which is the conjugate base of the acid. And this A minus is the common ion, and it shifts the position of the equilibrium to the left. This causes the pH to be higher, and higher pH means less acidic than the pH of the acid solution. So it lowers the hydronium ion concentration. So let's look at something that illustrates this common ion effect, where we've got three different systems. In this first system, we have acetic acid. And remember, acetic acid is a weak acid. And the concentration is 0.1 molar of acetic acid. And when we read that pH, the pH is 2.9. In the third container, we have the sodium acetate salt. And remember, this is the salt that contains the conjugate base of the weak acid. So sodium so sodium acetate is a salt, and the acetate ion is the conjugate base of the acetic acid. So since this is a conjugate base, we'd expect a higher pH. And notice that this pH is basic, so the pH is 8.9. Now in both situations, the concentrations were 0.1 molar. In this third reaction, or in this third system, we have 0.1 molar acetic acid and 0.1 molar sodium acetate. So this is a buffer. Notice how the pH is not as low as when it was just a weak acid. So that pH of the combined solutions with the same concentration is 4.7. So it's higher than the 2.9 of just the weak acid, but it's lower than the base of, of the sodium acetate, which was 8.9. So it's in between at that 4.7. So let's look at this problem where they want to know what is the pH of a buffer that is 0.14 molar HF and they give us the pKa of the HF as 3.15. And the concentration of the KF, which is a conjugate base salt, is 0 0.071 molar. So I write my chemical equation. So the HF, which is my weak acid, as it combines with water, it becomes deprotonated to make the F minus, And it makes the hydronium ion. So I set up my ice table, and initially I have 0.14 molar HF, and since my salt is KF, that KF completely dissociates. So if I start off with 0 0.071 molar KF, when it dissociates, it makes 0 0.071 moles of the K, so the potassium ions, but it also makes 0 0.071 moles of the fluoride ions. So this is where we get the concentration of the fluoride ion. So we start our change of the reaction, so we minus x from the 0.14. This increases the fluoride concentration by plus x, 
and increases the hydronium ion by plus x. We then calculate the equilibrium concentrations. Next we set up our mass action equation, products over reactants. And notice how this differs from our previous chapter where we didn't have any of the reagents on the right side when we started off some of these acid-base reactions. Now we've got some of the products already in solution, but they were added from adding a salt. So our fluoride concentration times our hydronium concentration over the concentration of the HF at equilibrium. But I need the Ka value as well so that I can solve for x. They told me that my pKa equals 3.15 so I can find the Ka by taking 10, raising it to the negative pKa, which gives me a Ka value of 7 times 10 to the minus 4th. So that I then set up my equation, but I'm going to assume that the change in concentrations are very small, so I'm, I'm going to use the approximation. So that simplifies our math. So now I can multiply both sides by 0.14 and then divide by 0.071 to solve for x. I get an x value of 1.4 times 10 to the minus third. And I have to still do my check to see if the approximation is valid. So I take my change in x, so the hydronium ion concentration over the initial concentration, multiply it by 100, gives me 1%, so this is less than 5, so I'm okay with this approximation. And again, that x represents the equilibrium concentration of the hydronium ion and I'm looking for the pH of my system. So if I take the negative log of my hydronium concentration that'll give me my pH which gives me a value of 2.85. And then if I wanted I can plug those values back into my Ka, my mass action equation to solve for Ka and I get 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4, so that this is very close to my originally calculated Ka of 7.0. So I'm good with my calculation. Now calculating the pH of a buffer solution can be simplified by using the equation derived from the Ka, and this is called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. The equation calculates the pH of a buffer from the Ka and initial concentrations of weak acid and salt of the conjugate base. And this works as long as the x is small. And that we're talking about the change in the hydronium ion concentration where we're still checking to see if the approximation is valid. Now before we start looking at the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, it has been my experience that because it does simplify the calculations, people have a tendency to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation when they're not supposed to because they get lost or they get overwhelmed so they think I can't do anything I'm just going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. But you have to remember the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation only applies to a buffer system. I don't know if I can say that enough. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation only applies to a buffer system. So unless the problem tells you that you have a buffer system or you calculate your limiting reagents and you have some strong base and an excess of weak acid or you have some strong acid and an excess of weak base. Unless you have those conditions you can't use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And the way that we worked that problem on the previous slide, so this problem here this method works every single time with every system. The Henderson-Hasselbalch only works for a buffer system. So you have to be sure you have a buffer before you start using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is expressed as the pH equals the pKa plus the log of the conjugate base anion of the initial value over the initial concentration of the weak acid. So I'm going to drive this for you to show you where this comes from. So using the mass action equation for a generic weak acid, we get products over reactant 
is expressed here. So in this equation, we're going to solve for the hydronium ion concentration. So multiply both sides by the HA concentration and divide by the A minus. Then we're going to take the negative log of both sides. Now that we can convert the multiplication to log addition, so we're going to separate part of our right hand side of the equation out so that we have the negative log of the Ka plus the negative log of the HA over the A minus. And remember the pH equals the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration so we're going to substitute the pH in and the pKa equals the negative log of the Ka so we're going to substitute that in as well. This basically just converts the negative logs to P. I now have the equation pH equals pKa plus the negative log of the acid over the base. So I've just simplified my equation here and the negative log of the acid over the base is the same thing as the log of the base over the acid. So I'm going to simplify this and get, in, and get rid of the negative sign. So this is how I get my final equation that the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. So we're going to do a practice problem where they ask us to find the pH of a buffer system and notice that they told us this is a buffer so I know that I can use the, the henderson hasselbach equation and the initial concentration of the weak acid is 0.14 they give us the pKa value of 3.15 for the weak acid and they tell us that the Kf so this F Kf also corresponds to the F minus concentration of 0.071 molar so I've written my henderson hasselbach equation. So pH equals the pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. I plug in my values and I get a pH of 2.86. So notice that this problem where we solve the pH to get this value of 2.86 gives me the same answer as a problem we worked several slides ago. So this is before we had derived the henderson hasselbach equation where we had the same conditions, a 0.14 molar HF and a pKa of 3.15 and a concentration of the Kf of 0.071. So we solved the exact same problem but using a different method because we knew it was a buffer and we used the henderson hasselbach equation. So the math was simplified a little bit by using the henderson hasselbach But either method, we got the same value. And I know this is 2.85 and the other was 2.86, but I think it's just a difference in the rounding. So we got a pH of 2.86 when we use the henderson hasselbach I can then use that to find the hydronium ion concentration. So the hydronium ion concentration equals 10 raised to the negative pH. So that's my hydronium concentration, which is 1.4 times 10 to the minus third. I can use that to check my approximation. So my hydronium ion concentration over the initial concentration of the acid gives me 1%. So the approximation is valid for this system as well. It's the same system. So do I use the full equilibrium analysis or the henderson hasselbach equation? The henderson hasselbach equation is generally good enough when the x is small and the approximation is applicable. Generally, the x is small approximation will work when both of the following are true. First, the initial concentrations of acid and salt are not very dilute, and the Ka is fairly small. For most problems, this means that the initial acid and salt concentration should be over a thousand times larger than the value of the Ka. How much does the pH of a buffer change when an acid or base is added? And though buffers do resist changes in pH when acid or base are added to them, their pH does change somewhat. Calculating the new pH after adding acid or base requires breaking the problem into two parts. First, there's the stoichiometry calculation for the reaction of the added chemical with one of the ingredients of the buffer to reduce its initial concentration and increase the concentration of the other. So added acid reacts with A- to make more HA 
an added base reacts with the HA to make more A minus. Then after you've done the stoichiometry calculation, then you do a equilibrium calculation of the hydronium ion using the new initial values of HA and A minus. So let's look at an example problem. Here they want to know the pH of a buffer that has a 0.1 mole of acetic acid and 0.1 mole of sodium acetate added to a 1 liter solution. And to that solution, 0.01 moles of sodium hydroxide has been added to it. So we want to know the pH of this entire system. So again, we think of this problem in two steps. And we always take care of the strong acids and strong bases first. Then we deal with the weak. Because we want to take care of the strong acids or strong bases first because they completely dissociate. Then we take care of the weak system because it only partially dissociates. And it, it's a bit shifty because it's an equilibrium system, it can shift. So we don't want to take care of something that can shift and then add something to it that will cause that first system to shift again. So we take care of the thing that goes in only one direction with a strong acid or strong base, then we take care of the equilibrium system. So our first step when we're looking at the acetic acid and the sodium hydroxide has been added, we take care of the neutralization reaction first. So the sodium hydroxide the hydroxide ion will react and deprotonate the acetic acid to make acetate. So notice that you know we've produced more acetate, which is going to increase this concentration here, and it's going to be a little more than 0.1 moles of what we originally added. And that sodium acetate, remember that's the conjugate base of the acetic acid. So this is why we don't mess with the equilibrium, because we need to take care of this first one-way reaction first. And notice that I have a one-way arrow to illustrate this reaction, this neutralization reaction. Now, I'm not going to show the sodium ions because they're spectator ions. And the water is a pure substance. So I'm not going to worry about the water concentration or the change in concentration of the water because it has no concentration. So I set up my ice table. And my initial moles of acetic acid, we said, were 0.1. And the hydroxide concentration is 0 0.01 and the acetate ion is 0.1. And notice that when I'm working with this strong acid, strong base, and I'm combining these things, I'm working with the number of moles. Now I'm going to apply the neutralization reaction, which is this what, equation that we've listed up here. And since this is a one-way reaction, we can think of this as a limiting reagent problem. So if I've got 0.1 moles of the acetic acid and 0.01 moles of the hydroxide ion concentration, and it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio, my hydroxide is my limiting reagent. I have the smallest amount of my hydroxide ion. So I'm going to consume all of my hydroxide ion, and that's going to use all of it. So that's minus 0.01 moles of the hydroxide ion. Well, because of the 1 to 1 mole ratio, we're going to lose that same amount, the same moles of the acetic acid. And they combine, when the acetic acid gets deprotonated, it makes the same amount of the acetate ion. So now I have my moles after the neutralization reaction. So I have 0 0.09 moles of acetic acid. I have no more hydroxide because I've consumed it all. And I've got 0.11 moles of the acetate ion. So I originally started off with 0.1 molar and I made some by deprotonating my acid by adding my base. So my new concentration or my new number of moles is 0.11 moles. Now step two. Now I can take care of my equilibrium reaction. So the acetic acid deprotonating to form the acetate ion and the hydronium ion. So again, this is an equilibrium reaction. So I have the two-way arrows. I write my mass action equation, so my concentration is my H plus over my acetic acid times the acetate ion concentration. And remember my mass action equation is dealing with concentration, so these have to be the molarity. And this is reactions done in a one liter system. So my concentration is going to be the moles divided by my volume, so my molarity is 0.09 of the acetic acid. 
So just to give us some more space, we're going to continue on with the same problem on the next slide. So we've still got the same equilibrium reaction. Here's our mass action equation. And our Ka, this is a Ka for acetic acid. We could look that up in a book. And we said on the previous slide that the initial concentration of the acetic acid is 0 0.09 molar. We're initially starting off assuming a concentration of 0, the H+, plus, and the acetate ion is 0.11 molar. So we'll have our change in the acetate ion, so minus x, plus x, plus x, and we get our new equilibrium values. These equilibrium values can then be plugged into our mass action equation. We're going to use the approximation. We're going to assume that the change in x is very small to simplify our math. Multiply both sides by the 0 0.09. Divide both sides by the 0 0.110 to solve for x. We get a value of 1.47 times 10 to the minus 5th. And remember this, hydro this x value represents the H plus concentration. We want to know the pH and before I can calculate my pH, I need to do a quick check to make sure that my approximation is valid. So I take my hydronium ion concentration over the initial concentration of our acetic acid times 100. It's definitely smaller than 5%, so my approximation is okay. So again, the X is the same thing as our hydronium ion concentration. If I take the negative log of that, I get my pH. So the negative log of 1.47 times 10 to the minus 5th equals 4.83. So that's the answer that we're looking for.